morning and good afternoon wherever you are in the art world so thank you to to be here with us for a very special summer uh, edition of the art talks with uh, Khaled uh, Ramadan and project from uh, Documenta 15 uh, we are um, going to in castle in Ruru house so good morning everyone how are you Good, good, good morning. Thank you. Good. So, uh, Khaled, you are going to introduce this uh, wonderful Malaysian uh, art collective, which is called Project Rabak. Uh, we first met in uh, Venice, in the Biennale, a couple of months ago. And so it's so nice to see you again. So you are going to highlight today uh, the, uh, the Seni Kenduri, the art of feast the celebration yeah. that has become a bit your your ph philosophy, your ethos. Uh, can you tell us a bit more? Thank you. Um, so maybe I'll go first and talk about the Sani Kaduri and the Art of Feast. So for this show in Documenta 15, uh, we know that the theme is Lumbong. So it really focuses on collectivism, resource sharing, as well as um, a very community-centric um, idea and concept mm -hmm. so project rabak it is this theme lumbong is really aligned with project rabak's ethos and philosophy we have always integrated this um, celebration of life celebrating with people all walks of lives and um, we want to integrate this concept into the show so maybe i can like introduce to you what kanduri means Kanduri means feast. So for instance, if you were to go to like a wedding banquet, like a wedding dinner, we welcome people with open arms and we would like serve people drinks and serve people food. And we would just be very um, open and welcoming to everyone who comes to the table and eat with us. So this is the sort of idea that we want to um, promote and introduce in our show. And we want to celebrate it through food, through um, resource sharing through ideas exchange and mm -hmm. so um, in our one week here in Documenta out of two days we were having um, we threw a feast we threw a kanduri um, we served uh, teh tarik which is called um, it's a pulled tea in Malaysia it's basically like a very iconic national drink in Malaysia and mm -hmm. we also um, integrated the serving of snacks as part of our performance art and also installation um, and of course, after that, you will see all of the pictures when we go through our works. But this is just a very brief overall uh, of the kind of um, concept and idea that we were trying to uh, present in Documenta 15. Yes, so it's uh, the concept of Gotong Royong. Eh? It's, yes. uh, and I think it's, it's really beautiful because, you know, as I said, it's an everyday uh, celebration that yeah. we you know we do, but it's something that uh, sometimes we, we don't think about that could be so important in every culture that we, you know, yeah. that, wherever we are in the yeah. art world. But this is something uh, I, I would love to see some of... Uh, of uh, some of the pictures. So um, currently we are at the Ruru House, um, Ruru yes. House on the ground. So Ruru House is where all of the everything's happening in Documenta around this building. There are so many exhibitions, workshops, and everything. So. Um, Um, at the stairs, we this is the opening of our kanduri. So the way we did it, it was a, a, a peaceful march and also like a, kind of like a celebratory walk while we walk from the stairs up here down to our exhibition venue. 
And as we do that, we were wearing this uh, tudong bawal, which we will explain more later. So yeah. we, were, we were collecting people on the way, like kind of like marching towards our uh, exhibition venue. And this march is also kind of um, a symbol to show that we are standing in solidarity with Rang Rupa as well as um, Taring Padi with all of the things that were happening in Documenta 15. It is a symbol of peace and a symbol of, um, I guess, destroying prejudice and racism mm -hmm. and discrimination. And so that was the sort of uh, statement that we want to portray when we were opening our Kanduri. So, yeah. how, how did the yeah. community, uh, how, how did, let's say, the audience uh, took, uh, mm -hmm. they, did they took part? Did they, took, they participated in this uh, friendly, let's say, walk? Yes, yeah, so we made a few friends along the way. So one of okay. our friends that we made was this guy called Ben. He's from Hamburg and he, he literally got to a castle like five minutes and he saw us and we we're like, hey, come and join our walk. And he's like, yeah, sure. And like after that, we just hung out the whole day. Uh, and you know, that that's really the sort of like Project Rabat uh, philosophy that we want to like, you know, show and like present and apply in, in the world. Like, so. Oh yeah, so like um, after we marched down the stairs, we were standing at, on the bench and then we read our manifesto of uh, Project Rabat. And this is the very first time um, Project Rabat ever expressly stated our manifesto. We've always had an idea of what Project Rabat is like. We've always had an idea of our philosophy, but we never put it down in paper. We never list it out. So it was kind of like a momentous uh, milestone for us. We were. Mm -hmm especially at this um, amazing event, Documenta 15. And for the first time, there's a Southeast Asian curator. So it felt like a very powerful moment. Um, yeah. yeah, especially for a, co a collective from Southeast Asia, you know, a yes. small collective from Southeast Asia. So um, yeah, we, we had a march and then we read our manifesto and then we marched towards the exhibition venue. I think in terms of reception, a lot of people were kind of like, oh, what are, what, what are these people doing? And, and then there were, there were a lot of mixed reactions, I think. Like, yeah. Because um, it was both in March as well as it looked a little bit more demonstrative as well. As, um, our, one of our members um, was holding a megaphone while he was yes. reading the manifesto. So a lot of people were kind of like, is this a demonstration? Is this a protest? <laughs> so there were like a lot of mixed reactions of people, but it made it more interesting because um, it made people, it disrupted a space. Yes, and I, and I think your beautiful colors must have attracted, you know, positive reaction more, more yes. than anything else because it's so striking and beautiful colors. So this is a visual manifesto. Yes. Our philosophies are made up of eight different concepts. The first one is feast and mm -hmm. then friendship, hang out, and then the fourth one is play together. And then the fifth one is learning, and then nurture, and then ecosystem, and then finally art. As you can see, we have put art last because everything else is so much more important to us. Celebrating life, you know, meeting new people, exchanging ideas, resource sharing. These are much more important to us than art ever is. <laughs> art comes secondary. It's more of like, you know, people and life first and then art second. Uh, art comes later. Comes later. Yeah. So this is a, a, man, a visual manifesto in which we have exhibited in a, the Documenta 15 as well. Um, and when we were reading the manifesto, these were the points that we were focusing on. Yeah. Yes. As a, as a central thing I can see is the practice of friendship. Mm -hmm more than yes. anything else and the, which is you know uniting people cultures and uh, and of course through art which is wonderful thank you very very beautiful yes. so these are mdf wood panels um, i kind of wanted to experiment with um, painting as well as wood cutting but not fully wood cut so um, i used the wood cut as a uh, sort of like a texture making the texture and uh, still sticking true to our our style and like it's more colorful and very pop art um, aesthetic. So um, yeah, <laughs> we didn't all do it together. Like each of us have, um, mm -hmm. we come up with the idea together, but then when it comes to execution, each of us have our own, uh, how do you say, like uh, things that we're good at. And things yeah, it that, depends on like our personal strengths. Like yeah. for, for her, she's more into like visual arts. 
paintings, drawings, and she has this uh, beautiful, um, the, like she has this, all these cute eccentric characters that fits very well to what Project Robot is. And for my part, I do a lot of performance and a lot more installation-based yeah. works. Mm -hmm. And then for other members, it depends on really what sort of strengths they have. And then mm. that's where it's sort of a conduri as well. It's this resource is varied. Yeah. So we kind of just work with who we have mm. and who engages with us most. Yeah. In a way, we are kind of circulating our resources in which is our personal strengths and arts. Maybe we can um, talk about some of Dani, Dan's work. Yes. Is, uh, do you want to yeah, take over? <laughs> so this is Te Tarik Replo. Um, it's a depiction or it's an installation that's inspired by, of course, the iconic, almost national drink, Te Tarik. Uh, and it's technically a fabric installation that's interactive and um, attendees for people who are passing by are, are encouraged to join in, join in the fun period to participate in the KTR installation by wearing it in different multiple ways because you can wear it at the neck area as well as at the waist area because there's a zipper mm -hmm. that's adjustable. And um, the inspiration for this is of course um, Tari in general is because it's so integrated within our lives in Malaysia. It has become sort of a staple feat of piece where you do it's kind of like a, how do you say it's um, always there when you're when you're hanging out yeah it's like coffee or tea. It's, a, it's a it's a social snack yeah a social drink yeah mm -hmm. and um so in the installation when you wear it you also you can also enjoy like the snacks that are in Nduri and the Tehtari itself and have conversations with one another so it's a sense of unity involved in that uh, and it's also a commentary of um, what's currently happening in Malaysia because of the climate crisis. Flooding is occurring almost like a monthly thing rather than a yearly thing. And um, mm -hmm. it correlates to the fact that Kuala Lumpur, in direct translation, means muddy land. Its colour is muddy as well. It's brown. <laughs> and when it floods, when Kuala Lumpur floods or Central yeah. City area floods, it's the same color. <laughs> yeah, we are always joking, saying like, oh my god, look at that, it looks like Teh Tari. Yeah, Which, and um, a yeah. very, very Malaysian practice as well, being yeah. Malaysians, is that um, because we're almost so used to this sort of situation, yeah. that <laughs> even if it's flooding, if there's, uh, there's thunderstorms, we are still seen kind of like hanging out, yes. even if the, the shop is flooded. Yeah. So it's kind of... Um, a representation of uh, yeah. that sort of culture, that sort of uh, practice and value yeah. where it doesn't really matter what's happening around us, we will yeah. still technically see each other. Yeah, find a way to find joy somewhere, you know, make light of things as well. Yeah. That's, a, that's a beautiful philosophy of life, I think. It's a, it's a, it's a bit... But you are now in, in uh, Documenta 15, you are in the Ruru house at the moment? Yes, yes. It's the, we are the same place where this picture is. <laughs> Uh, the next one is space. Right, so this is uh, Lawo Pawo Pawos, also known as Dishwill, and it's also an installation and performance art by Dan Giliani. Yeah, so this is technically how we circulate the feasting, because of course, um, it does not seem possible for us to actually cook in big quantities or bring like the, the ingredients from back home back here. So the way that we did it was more towards um, snacks. Yeah. So we brought back, uh, we brought snacks from home that were very much staple snacks from our childhood growing up. Uh, and even the backpacks are technically tins, traditional tins, uh, tin biscuits that are um, staple in Malaysian, uh, it's, it's quite staple in Malaysian culture. So lauk pao paos, if you directly translate it, means um, uh, dishes, uh, whale dishes. Yeah, so Lao Pao means dishes, like different dishes. Dishes and hot dishes, which is something that uh, usually in Kunduris are available because in our culture we have varied dishes and sometimes people bring in their, what do you say, their share of cooking. Yeah, like potluck. Potluck. Yeah. Uh, so Lao Pao Pao is about becoming a whale yourself and circulating the resources. And resources here is not only because it's carried by a person, it's not only a cost food, food or drinks, it's also um, the conversations you have, the knowledge that you exchange, the ideas that you change. Because 
it's a lot about um, whales as in the ecosystem, the ocean ecosystem, they are, uh, what do you call them? The ecosystem engineers. The ecosystem engineers. Yeah. So they are actually very central in circulating around resources. Yeah. And even when they die, you know, there's like, a, they, be, they actually feed the ocean. Feed the ocean <laughs> yeah. and they provide entire new, uh, new ecosystems and food chains. So that's what, that's the inspiration behind Lao Pao Pao's. So a lot of people are allowed to just um, wear the backpacks as they go around socializing. So it creates that sort of um, circulation of uh, food, again, food knowledge and um, friendship. Really touching, beautiful. So here's another picture of us <laughs> circulating resources. As you can see, the, these are the snacks inside the bag. Uh, backpacks um, and then we would go around asking people do you want a snack and then from there we would like strike up conversations exchange ideas and everything yeah oh, uh, wonderful one thing so and the, the, how was the community how did they react while you were exchanging uh, oh we can have a snack this it's is free, free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> mostly they're like oh it's free uh, yeah and um, yeah, from there we, we introduce each other in a way um, circulating these snacks is kind of like, like an icebreaker as well yeah <laughs> and i think everyone a lot of uh, people were quite like surprised and they were quite happy with uh i, I think with this installation because yeah. free food <laughs> free food um we have our next installation which is also yeah. by zani it's called uh tudong bawal <laughs> This is, if you look at all the other works, there's this correlation to sea creatures, I think, sea animals. Fish. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Tudong Bawal, in, if you directly translate it, is technically a. Uh, it's, it's because of its shape that looks like a pomfret fish. It's called a Tudong Bawal. So, Bawal in our language is pomfret fish. Mm. So, the idea is um, usually during Kunduris, uh, we have a lot of, uh, of course, women are the backbones towards all of these Kunduris because they're, they're the ones cooking, setting the table, you know, setting the space, uh, socializing. So, a very staple wear that they usually wear during the Kunduris are, even in daily wear, is the Tudung Bawa itself. It's our version of the babushka or the shawl. And so, it correlates with like the whale, the lao pao paos, and these are, you can say, the smaller fishes within the vicinity <laughs> that's just swimming around, um, helping here and there, socializing, exchanging ideas and whatnot. Uh, so, this is, um, the Turong Bawal is an uh, installation that's wearable and also people can also bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. Another free wow. gift. <laughs> oh, it's also free. A lot of, <laughs> yeah. This is also free for everyone to bring back home. Because usually um, in the feast as well, you have like a door gift sort of mm -hmm. thing. So this is kind of um, similar to that, like a door gift. <laughs> Beauty. We have uh, a video art, and this was actually the centerpiece of the. Uh, Exhibition when you come down you immediately will see the video playing and the video art is called Tanpa Te Tarik Kita Gile which means uh, without Te Tarik we are nothing So again this is uh, us paying homage to this amazing drink Te Tarik It's a Malaysian food tea and again we want to emphasize how Te Tarik is a symbol of um, unity symbol of uh, all walks of life, no matter what class you are, what race, what gender you are, you will enjoy this drink. When you are around the table, you will order this drink and then, like Dani said just now, it's a social drink, right? So it really ties everyone together regardless of um, race or class or gender. And um, yeah, like, I think we are trying to also say that this is a symbol of peace destroys discrimination um, so the whole video it's basically a, a tutorial uh, on how to make data ring uh, first of all you need cheap black tea condensed milk hot water and some sugar mm -hmm. and here, here you, we have the ingredients here's a uh, hot water tea and uh, here we have the condensed milk and then when you're done with that you have to pull you have to pull really you have to pull really hard and the harder you pull the, the better the taste yeah, the frothier and the more 
feel the flavorful taste of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I wish we could try it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we were serving this at Documenta 15 in, well, in our Kanduri uh, in the two days of the whole week. everyone enjoying themselves wearing the dudong bawa <laughs> and here we are uh, us yeah the project robot team outside of uh, Uru house documents of 15 and uh, this was the tea station where we were making tea serving to people these were um, some of the uh, some of our Malaysian friends who came down like co completely coincidentally we didn't uh, yeah, when we came in, we immediately just knew that they were Malaysians and we were like, oh, hi, welcome, welcome to our Kanduri. Yeah, they were studying in um, Kassel, Kassel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So it was like a reunion of... Uh... Yes, a, a reunion. It feels really nice and familiar. Here, here they are, interacting huh? with the installation piece. Very nice. Tarik means pull tea, so that yeah. way there's a lot of pulling involved. Yeah, a lot of pulling. So Tarik means pull and Te means tea. <laughs> yeah. Lovely pictures. And here they were playing um, a traditional Malay game called Batu Seremban. I don't really know the rules actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's technically just collecting stones while you, while you. It's kind of like juggling. Yeah, where, where you throw it up, you want to collect the stones. Uh, okay. Yeah, like quite a, a really famous traditional Malay game. Some of which were played like during canoes and uh, even, you know, in reunions with your family. Yeah. So, are any ideas that you guys want to share? Because I was a bit surprised, I have to say. Um, of your definition of, of your position of art in your in your first work of art that you were showing the, with all the drawings, yeah, and um, where you were saying that basically art is secondary, yeah. Um, I had two two thoughts that I want to share. First, I've, I'm funny that your reference for art is Duchamp, which was not <laughs> yes. using, which was not yes. doing uh, art. You know, he was yes, just deciding exactly. that things are art. So I find it really funny. Mm. But um, I would I would argue that art is not on the side or secondary. I think art is the link to all. Yeah. Because yeah. everything you are doing is basically triggering an awareness. Yes. And and this is the main job of art. And you know you see you're doing exactly what everybody does with art which makes me crazy i'm sorry if i react like this but it's <laughs> nothing against you you know it's again the fact that i'm really a true believer believer then art is everywhere yeah that we did put it in a bubble the art market increased that bubble of course mm -hmm. because they made it even more elitist and everything mm -hmm. and everything which is not in this bubble for them it's not art you know on yeah. top but you guys as artists and performance and everything you are the center point. You are the one. You everything you are doing is about awareness in yes. the different topics. So it is this kind of thread, red thread, so to say, which is linking everything. Yes. So I wouldn't say that art is secondary and that you put it at last. For me, yes. it's it's in the center point, and you have everything which is more like a star, you know, like this. Yes. Yes. That's. Oh. Um, I, I totally agree with what you say. I guess no, I the, the word the secondary isn't really the right way to um, say it, but like I think um, ag agreeing with what you say, like following what you say, that art is a piece of 
everything art is a piece yeah, of Yeah, for, me, for me it's center. Yeah. It's completely centered because then from this you're linking because art is about emotions. Yeah. Let's not talk about conceptual art, this is something else, because then that triggers our intellect. But if art in general, when I look at your drawings, it's not my intellectual brain working, it's my emotional brain. And so for me, this is where you're you're bringing everybody together. Yeah. So for me, art is center, it's completely yeah. at the center. So uh, It's beautiful, through your words and through these pictures, we, we are, you know, we were put in, you know, in, in thinking about uh, this celebration, you know, what is happening? Because uh, this is what we were talking with Francois yesterday is unless you are in a, in, a, in a place, you can't really experience what's happening, even though you can see images, but you know, through your words, through, you know, now I didn't know about, uh, about your beautiful Seni Kenduri, and now it's, I'm part of it, which yeah. is, uh, I think, uh, educating and teaching and also, but not so much, you know, sharing uh, your um as elizabeth was saying it's you know it's emotions it's uh, happiness beautiful positive uh, oh. feeling really really beautiful so uh, we wish we would have been there the person yeah. but gave us a bit of a glimpse of uh, what what you know this this joyful moment of life very simple, <laughs> yes yes very simple but A celebration uh, of life yes but beautiful thank you Yes, thank you so much for your really kind words. <laughs> thank you to you. Thank you to you. So we we are back to to Dr. collect. Collins. Collect. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it was it was really a different experience when I came here as a support to the project Java, and and felt um, the extension of what. Um, uh, the one group I was trying to do at uh, Documenta 15 is um, fits very, very well in the concept and, and the practice of uh, the Baba group. Um, but despite this, you know, this sharing and happiness and uh, feelings of um, uh, collectiveness, um, there has been some, uh, um, I would say, sad moments for the Documenta 11. Um, but to sum it up, I uh, know it's you. Uh, um, I guess I've noticed that this um, less visual and more verbal uh, documenta than the other documenta we have seen. And uh, for some others, uh, they will say probably it's uh, uh, um, most non visual uh, or visually not interesting, but uh, conceptually it's more like vibrant and it aims at something bigger than just an art exhibition. And uh, the, uh, the tutorial um, concept that has um, been approached by the by the Indonesian uh, group is to break away from this, um, you know, make it strictly in an art exhibition, you know, mm -hmm. an art exhibition. They were more into uh, looking into a new cluster of structure. Um, by bringing lots of um, collectives together, um, where the, also those collectives bring their own, you know, um, uh, affiliated artists into the into the scene and so on. So it's most interesting thing in and this is actually what uh, the documentation of the be documented in the post document. You know, at the end of the uh, of this handy page, um, what would what the documentation of all these activities is it will be more significant to see and study and analyze uh, than the actual exhibition itself. Because when when you're in the exhibition itself, you see so many things and not you see so many things. Uh, you know, um, activities here and there. Um, but I think the documentation at the end it will be very interesting to uh, to study and. Uh, Yes, <clears throat> but Khaled, uh, how how because you you said something very interesting. How how different it was uh, this time, if you can say so. If you yeah, if, if you want, if you want to work. look look at, at it at this um, edition of Documenta um, from comparing it to the previous ones, um, we will see it's the most most politicized most. The, you know, uh, charged, yeah, and, and also um, 
most, mm, I would say, documented that have allowed the intervention of politicians and political spectrum into the art world. We have, we have seen in all what has been published um, after the controversy of uh, uh, the big drawings that also the Indonesian art collective was pulled out due to accusation of anti-Semitism uh, figures in the, in the drawing. Um, we've seen that uh, many opportunists, politicians have tried to take actually um, action and point fingers to the um, not, not only to the editorial group or, or and, and the document um, administration, but uh, also to the whole concept of them. what is that using uh, millions on this year, and what are we achieving, and what are we um, um, catering for, you know, as, as a. You know, as a so, as, <laughs> um, Politically, has, has, has been um, a very charged documenta, and uh, it, it didn't stop there. At least several issues where uh, some of the uh, pointed uh, directors and also observers were actually stepped down um, due to the lack of the communication and also um, fear of um, you know pointing them out as anti this and anti that. Despite that, uh, the uh, Winka Group they have actually very, very clear and very um, uh, sort of uh, an happy, happy approach to celebra cele cele celebratory approach to the mm -hmm. concept. They were they found themselves trapped in, in a debate on freedom of expression and semitism and a debate that is practically much larger than. I would say from even, even Germany itself, because <clears throat> uh, this this debate had a trigger um, um, a global debate that have reached global media outlets like Al Jazeera and, and, and CNN. We haven't seen the art world reaching that unless there is some sort of communication. Um, mm -hmm. How these media outlets get in on board on this is because debate of, of what's taking place uh, like in the Middle East is, is not over. Conflict is an ongoing conflict. When you're bringing in conflict into the outer world um, in, a, in a, such a black and white manner, you know, uh, you will notice that you are actually uh, um, dealing with politics more than you're dealing with art. Um, very conflict. thin line, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, but what we've, what we've seen is uh, that, uh, in, in my opinion, is that the, the control of the institutions, uh, the, uh, the art institutions by the governments, whether it's in East or the West, uh, it's still heavy handed. Uh, the art institutions, especially those who are uh, uh, subsidized by, by the establishments, um, around the world, they are not free as they wish to be. Um, politicians still have the upper hand in coining what, is, what, is, what kind of art they want to see. We've seen this situation over and over again. And supposedly, you know, when, when dealing with uh, art, you um, look at it as, as a, probably the last free platform that has remained out there, uh, yet it's, it's still under you know, um, uh, some sort of control, or at least that uh, uh, you're not totally free as, as an artist, as you were actually promised by, um, you know, a democratic country like Germany is supposed to be liberal or open-minded. But we see that that is uh, more of a, um, I, would, I would say, it's another norms of control of the global north over the global south. This pattern of, of you know control is it still is it still valid. The debate yes. <coughs> is still, <coughs> sorry, still uh, very much um, um, an ongoing debate, and I don't think we're gonna uh, um, see a settlement to this issue. Not in, in, in this document, and probably not even in five more. Is uh, especially with your 
um, concept of friendship, of uh, of uh, of um, being equal to everybody. That uh, you know, in everyday lives, we see that it's very, <laughs> it's it's very difficult to 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 be who we really want to be um, uh, sometimes. But uh, Khaled, you with the project at the back, what are you going to do now? Um, we talked to the collectors of uh, publishing maybe a uh, book, mm -hmm. it's like the next year. Oh, so we will be okay. uh, working together on a uh, new publication. Actually, at, at, this, uh, at this venue here, uh, two days ago, uh, they have launched their um, latest book. I have the book with me. Yeah. Give ah. a minute. Uh, you will see it now. Um, and uh, the activity was very inspiring and I thought, Probably also, yeah, this is a congratulations. <laughs> Project Rabat is 10 years old, and this book is uh, a celebration of that uh, archiving and recording all of the uh, things that we have done in the past 10 years um, from our very humble beginning all the way until Venice Biennale, which is like possibly one of our biggest, uh, I guess. Uh, biggest things that we've ever done. <laughs> so the first book in Malaysian arts and culture history um, that focuses on collectivism. Yeah, so this book, <laughs> we just published it and we are planning to publish it. So again, thank you for making us part of, of this uh, beautiful moment in history. And uh, But for your, your achievement was incredible. So, you know, I think uh, also Meeting you in person is all different. You know, we were there uh, with with Khaled, so and seeing your installation there was wonderful. That was Project Rabak walking live from Documenta, Documenta 15. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Carolina. <laughs> okay, pass the cube though then. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was live. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. We say oh, goodbye yeah. and we say thank you for you know for being with us today. Really, it was an honor and an honor to meet you all. Actually, I, I knew Jay but, uh, as part of the music scene, you know, but I didn't know the rest of the group and their activities. Um, but I was actually quite delighted to uh, to be introduced to uh, Rabak, uh, Project Rabak, because uh, what they have done um, it mesmerized me really, and it uh, has, has really triggered so much uh, inspiration in me. And, uh, I think that they have uh, contributed to the, um, the venue in Venice. Uh, I, I would say it was really, it was big, it was, it was very inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> Bellissime, beautiful words, beautiful words. We'll just say hello, maybe. Um, so it would be lovely uh, to Oh my to god, hear. that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's my dad. <laughs> we are from, from hello. Hello, Lydia. Maybe that's my mom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> yeah. We say hello to everyone. <laughs> Beautiful yeah. friendship protest of yeah. love and, uh, and real values. Yeah. Bravi. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Oh, bye. 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 Goodbye. Thank bye. you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, later I'll take a picture. Yeah, okay. Having a Zoom meeting now about documents. You can stay like that. Yeah, but you can. You're very welcome.